I'm Joyce Short. And I used to be Joyce Brady, and uh, I was born Ponca City, Oklahoma, and that's where my mother was when I was born. My father was, was a physician in the United States before he went to Nanking, China, under the auspices of the United Christian Missionary Society. I had an older brother who has gone to heaven now. And he and I were very close, and he was a year and a half older. Tell us what caused you and your family to be in Nanking, China in the 1930s. Edna and Richard Brady, my parents, first went to the Philippines. And they were in Manila and Luwag, and the hospital in Manila was named Mary Child's Hospital. Uh, there about a year, they said it was just so hot in Manila. The mountains are lovely in the Philippines, but we only went there in the summer. So, so then the Missionary Society sent them to Nanking. <clears throat> and I think it was 1929, because I was born 1927. And I think it was 1929 by the time we went to Nanking. And, <clears throat> and Dad worked all the time at the hospital and the United Christian Missionary Society. He liked the system that they had, uh, not how many people got sick, but uh, on a salary, a monthly salary. At least he knew where his salary was coming from each month. And, he, and there were other doctors there at University Hospital. And we lived in a house. <clears throat> the houses that we lived in were brick houses, very nicely built. And one of the places, the missionary had come back to the USA, and her name was Miss Lyons. There were a lot of single missionaries over there. <clears throat> but, uh, Neil and I had a lot of fun. He, he had a bicycle, and later he had a motorbike, and I had a horse. <clears throat> and we would ride out to Lotus Lake sometimes. But that was when we were a little bit older. And, <clears throat> so your father was a doctor. Tell us what you know about the others on the staff. There were several doctors there, Dr. Bob Wilson and Dr. Daniels and Dr. Trimmer. And, uh, <clears throat> and there were a few photographs of how he fixed uh, plaster of Paris casts on people that have a broken back or broken ribs. and. And uh, he was mostly at the hospital, but they knew by word of mouth where to get help if they were hurt. And, <clears throat> and he had uh, helpers like uh, John Gillespie McGee was there. He was uh, another minister and James McCallum and he said James McCallum was right there and Dr. Wilson. Wilson was from New York. My mother Marilyn was born there. Tell us about that. My, my sister was born uh, March 8th 1937 Marilyn was born and uh, and we had pictures when she was three or four weeks old. She was born at, at the hospital there. But not long after she was still a tiny baby, we, we were evacuated. Not my father, but my mother and my brother and my sister, we all went to Kuling, K-U-L-I-N-G, in the mountains. The only way to get there <clears throat> was to hike. And so you either rode in a sedan chair or you hiked. And they had an established American school there cooling American school. And uh, Dad did not leave the hospital at all. He was, he was necessary to, to it. And you were young when it happened, but tell us about the International Safety Zone. <clears throat> the, the safety zone, uh, well, uh, there was a drum tower, a uh, little building over there outside our compound. The compound had Dr. Trimmer's house in it and Dr. Brady's house. 
and also a bamboo grove in there, and also Hui Ming and Hui Ling that I played with, lived in a little house in there in the compound. Well, this, um, <clears throat> this um, drum tower thing, as far as I knew, it was this, this little building over here where the, the air raid warning sounded real loud. I mean, it was loud. And uh, what did I do when there was going to be an air raid? I didn't do much of anything except listen for the airplanes to come over. And, and I'd go over to this uh, Chinese family lived right close to us and, and put my head under the, so the, the cement the thing. And that's all I did. Joyce, can you tell us how the, the safety zone was set up? <clears throat> yeah, is it set up well, it, 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 like, like I said, the, the hospital had a red cross on it, and uh, but I don't know how big it was or anything. I really don't know because uh, they went out in the ambulance, and, uh, <clears throat> and they'd pick up these people, and Dad told me the main thing to notice was that uh, if the person hadn't... Uh, had been standing in a door frame, they were saved usually, because the door frame would help protect him when the pieces of the building would fall on him. But of course, some of the people were already dead, so, but they just picked up the injured. I do remember <clears throat> that the, some of the planes did come over while I was at the house uh, where we lived, and, and they were dropping bombs. But we were in a safety zone and I could hear the bombs going, yeah, boom, yeah, boom. And so mother said, go next door and put your head under this cement. Uh, it was a help wash tub to the washing machine they had next door, and real close. And I put my head under there. She said she, that would help her not be so nervous. But my dad said, oh, they're not going to bomb us. There's a red cross painted on top of the hospital. So he says, we're safe, Edna. Don't worry about me. I'm over here uh, helping the people that need help. And this war took a little while to heat up. And it wasn't real bad right then. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, he says, Edna, I'm operating on a dog right now. It's very important. This man is trying to leave on one of the ships. My dad says, I'm going to operate on him and make him well so this man can get on a ship, he couldn't see where to put his left foot next to his right foot. So <clears throat> he did that and mother quit worrying about it. But <clears throat> so after a while, we, I remember leaving and they were also having a flood uh, where we were going close by to cooling because I remember being in the, a little rowboat with Marjorie Wilson, Dr. Wilson's wife was also e evacuating to <clears throat> to Ku Ling. Tell us more about my grandfather, your dad. Dad was always busy at the hospital and that's what, that's what, he, that's what he felt like he was born to do. He, he, was, he, he was raised in a, in a Christian home where his father was a dentist. So dad, <clears throat> dad wanted to go to medical school and and he, he, you know, it cost a lot of money, but somehow they did it. A couple years upon returning back to the U.S., the Chinese government bestowed an award upon your father. It was the Order of the Brilliant Jade. Tell us about that. This uh, Order of the Purple Jade Award, it was for helping the Chinese people, and it was the highest award to a non-citizen of the United States ever given at the time. Nearly three decades after these atrocities occurred, slowly the world begun to hear and understand what happened in 1937 Nanking, China. This is just one more event towards teaching the public history so it will not be repeated.